Okay, so if you watched the last video, then you would know that I went to go and have a look at a BMW M4 crash damaged competition. <laughs> Is that a spec? And judging by the title of this video, you probably already know. I kind of bought it. I couldn't help myself. Still needs an exhaust. Let's go. Now, although I feel like when I looked at this car, I checked over everything, since I've bought it, I feel like I've missed a few things. And there's some things which don't quite, well, add up. But we'll get to that later in the video. But for now, let me go show you exactly what I've just bought. My new BMW M4 competition. Okay, so we're gonna go through the damage on what adds up, what doesn't add up, what I think's happened in a little while, but for now, we've gotta get this thing moved. So when these BMWs are crashed and the airbags are deployed, it activates almost like a kill switch on the battery. Now you can bypass this on the battery, but I didn't want to start the car because it looked like the oil cooler was off, so possibly no oil in the car, and also no coolant in there as well. And to move it into neutral, you have to actually start the car. So the M4 was loaded onto the trailer using skates, but when we got it back, we couldn't even get the jack under it to get skates on it. So we had to actually drag it off the trailer, trying not to damage any of the gearbox or diff. Now the passenger side front wheel, there is literally no suspension arms even connected. So you can see the wheel just having a mind of its own. But overall, the Golf did well, but it didn't end here. Now we only had car skates, which are meant to be used indoor on smooth surfaces. So using them outdoor on this surface was gonna be a challenge, <laughs> and it was. But eventually the Golf pulled it into the unit and we got it there. Okay, so here we go again. Probably one of the biggest rebuild projects I'm about to attempt. So what exactly is it, or what was it? Okay, so it was a BMW M4 competition 2016. It has all the stuff in here that you expect from an M4 competition, like the carbon dash and the M4 competition seats, and also the seat belts as well. It's done 29,000 miles, but obviously it's been in an accident and it's categorized as a category S. Now whilst category S does mean it has structural damage, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has frame damage. So from inspection, I can't see any sort of frame damage. All this looks structurally okay, but we won't find out until we obviously start bolting on new parts. Now the only problem I can see, which is a bit of a ball ache. So this suspension on right here bolts to the subframe. This is part of the subframe, which, <laughs> well, is over there. So the whole subframe will need to be dropped, lowered and changed. The track rod is completely popped out. So this is completely free to do whatever it wants. There's also suspension damage on the driver's side because the wheel is really far cumbered in. It does spin, but it's something definitely not right. And it partly probably to do with the subframe. Okay, so on the interior, the steering wheel airbag's gone, the dashboard airbag's gone, which has also smashed the front screen as well, and the curtain airbags have gone as well. I've only done one set of airbags ever before in my entire life, and that was on the Golf R. For some reason, I enjoyed it, so I can't wait to actually tackle this. Now, with regards to the engine, does it run? Now, the previous owner showed me a video of the engine running on his driveway, and it sounded okay. Now we can only hope and pray that the engine is okay, but we won't know for sure until the oil cooler is back on and the radiator is all connected and then we can start it up and run it and probably put some fresh oil in it as well. But well, this is all about taking risks. Now, if you ignore the airbags and everything, the interior is actually in pretty good condition comparing it to when we got the Golf, which is an actual state. So that's a good bonus. Now there is something which doesn't quite add up with this BMW M4. And before I show you, if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you go and click that subscribe button down below. Go and do it now, and then you're gonna be notified every time I drop a video of the rebuild of this BMW M4. But let me tell you what doesn't quite add up. Okay, now, before buying this car, obviously I HPR checked it, as I do most of the other cars. This is where things get a little bit weird. Okay, so check this out. On the 13th of December, 2020, we can see that the car was categorized as a category S insurance loss. Vehicle structurally damaged, but repairable, and the insurance and the insurance decided not to repair. Then something that doesn't make sense to me, but it might be okay, I'm not too sure, but I'll let you guys have a look at it. 
Then it says here the current plate was transferred to this vehicle on the 18th of the 1st, 2021. So does that mean the car had the old registration plates put back on it and the car's been fixed and driving since then and then crashed again? Or does that mean that the original plates just got put back on it when the car was auctioned? Not too sure. But either way, it doesn't change the fact that I bought a BMW M4 which now needs repairing. But stay tuned because things are about to get a lot worse. Now what I want to do, just for peace of mind, is to drop the metal tray off which is underneath the engine just to see if there's any damage to the sump. Fingers crossed there isn't. Before we get started on that, I wanted to say that buying all these crazy cars and doing these modifications has literally been like my childhood dream and it's absolutely unreal. I still can't believe it to this day. But isn't it mental how one Audi TT can change into a, the Lamborghini Gallardo and a bunch of other crazy cars. And none of this would have been possible without hard work. And that's the whole reason behind this new merch collection. So here it is, the new collection, the hard work beats talent collection. The t-shirts are a longer fitment. The print comes on hoodies as well. And also as the weather decided to get better, we decided to go for the shorts as well. A full collection. And an added cool little bonus, the ink is actually reflective. So if you want to grab some of the new collection and support the channel, click the link in the description box below. Right, let's get this under tray off. I got an ache inside of me. Ah. Ah, right. Okay, this is about to get a little bit more expensive. Okay, so something I didn't expect, there is a window in the sump. So the sump has got a massive hole in it. And also in the gearbox sump as well, that has also got a hole in it. So potentially, well, we could have the bottom end would have, could have gone if the engine has been ran with obviously no oil in it. But to get the sump off, all this subframe has got to come down anyway um, to obviously check for the damage. So, oh, fantastic. This is all just great fun, isn't it? Okay, so here's the conclusion. The gearbox sump has got a hole in it. The engine sump's got a hole in it. There's no point buying new sumps and trying to run it yet until we strip everything down and see the extent of the damage. I can't get the sump off without taking the subframe down. So I've got to drop the subframe, take the sump off, and then we're gonna check hopefully if everything's okay there. But again, we're not gonna know until we do that. Definitely something I didn't take into consideration. But when you buy these cars, you expect the worst. As we already know. Well, what an unexpected turn of events or is this stuff becoming expected now it's <laughs> it's kind of my channel isn't it well all we can do is look on the bright side here i know a lot of you are rooting for this and ready to start this bmw build and so am i i'm excited to get going this is going to be one of the biggest builds that we've done or attempted so far well it was before we saw the sump the good thing about this one as opposed to the c63 we know it's not been doctored up we've almost got it fresh from the accident. I mean, look, we've still got the grass from the ditch that <laughs> this car ended up in. Okay, so the guy who sold me this was a young lad in his early 20s, I'd say. He bought it from an auction, crash damage. Now I'm kind of thinking he bought it, thought it was gonna be a bolt-on repair, kind of like myself, then seen the sump and the gearbox and then decided to abandon there. It's what any normal person would probably do in that situation. And it's probably what I would do in a situation if it wasn't for YouTube. And the good thing about having a YouTube channel is, well, fingers crossed the content should cover some of the repairs. So again, if you enjoy this content, I'm asking for your support. And it is completely free. All you've got to do is hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, share this video around to anyone you know. Because I think I'm really going to need the help on this one. Because I think... I've bought another money pit. See you in the next video. Peace out.